everybody, what's up? It's Misha. Today I'm going to talk to you about getting your kids to sit through church, okay? Or any meeting that they have to be quiet in, okay? That matters. <laughs> Stick with me, we'll dive right in. Okay, everybody, so the number one rule, the absolute like rule of thumb with getting your kids to sit through something that they have to be quiet in is to make the alternative less appealing. Look, I remember my dad. He, when, whenever we were being a little bit too crazy in church or rambunctious or whatever, we weren't staying within the you know quiet whatever what, that we were supposed to be doing, he would take us out of church. He would take us into a separate room where it was just he and I, and he would set up two chairs, two chairs. And he would sit me on one of them and he would sit on the other one. So we're facing each other and he would look at me. He would just look at me. <laughs> no looks like. None of those looks, okay? He would just look at me. Just not happy, not sad, not disappointed, none of that. He would just look at me. He would just make sure that I knew there's another option to, you know, sitting still and, and being quiet and listening and, you know, doing whatever I could quietly in my lap. There's an alternative to that. And the alternative is to sitting in a room, sitting across from me while I look at you. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't fun. Like I didn't do it very much, right? <laughs> I didn't like sitting across from my dad. I was I was sitting with a gal in church and she had one of her um her son sitting next to her and she turned to me and and unknowingly, you guys, I want to give her the benefit of the doubt. Unknowingly, she turned to me and she's like, "I just this is like another thing where she couldn't get him to go to a class. And she's like, I just, I can't get him to go to class. And I looked over and the kid had her phone and he was playing a video game. And I was like, duh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Now I'm not trying to be mean. Like right now I'm trying to give her the benefit of the doubt to something that was like staring at me blankly in the eye. It was like, he's not gonna go to class as long as, as long as you're letting him play that video game while he's sitting next to you. The alternative has to not be as fun. Okay, I have one more idea for you guys that makes the alternative not fun, okay? And here it is. So instead of going out and sitting in a room, when your kids are acting up in church, you take them out and you just do laps with them around the church, walking, like outside, just around and around and around the church. And pretty soon they realize, okay, this isn't fun. And you, you know, you don't even have to deliver it with like, well, if you can't be good in church, we're gonna, you don't have to do any of that because it's a message that already speaks. You're like, okay, here's the alternative. Let's go for a walk. It's just like, okay, well, if, if we're not gonna be in there, we're gonna be walking. So let's go, get your steps in. <laughs> And you just walk and they quickly learn that that's not fun to them. That's not fun. They would much rather sit in the general meeting with everybody else and sit with whatever you've brought for them, okay, to participate in their space and be quiet and respectful. Like, that's way better than these alternatives, right? So on the positive side, okay, those are both like, you know, consequences, right? the sitting in the room and walking around the church, those are both sort of consequences and alternatives that aren't fun. But on the contrary, you know, bringing a bag, and this is kind of, this kind of is, is varies on age. You can use the sitting in the room and the walking around church for like lots of ages. And you'll know as a parent, like which one's appropriate and how long to do it and all that stuff. Like it's really just to get the message across, right? But this, this, this idea of what you bring in your bag, like when my kids are tiny, I literally like go to like the dollar store and I buy like a couple of things they've never seen before. And I put them in little baggies, like little 
dinosaurs or, you know, cycle through things that they didn't see very often because it would grab their attention or like coloring books or whatever it is for them. And you leave it tucked away, right? And you pull out one thing at a time. And as you can see that they're like getting spent with that, then you bring out the next thing or maybe a snack or whatever. I mean, by the time that kids are like five, maybe we're talking about just like coloring books and markers or something like that. You know, when they're really young, you've got to like keep their attention and bring like neat, you know, snacks and like all kinds of things to like keep their attention, but they can still learn that the alternative to this, whatever's in my parents' bag, the alternative to that is sitting in a room or walking around church. Trust me, it works wonders. But the thing is, is you have to stick to it. If you're gonna take your kids out of the general meeting, like you can't let them run the halls one time and then sit in a chair one time. You can't do that. You have to be consistent. So you choose the room or you choose whatever it is. And, and it doesn't mean that you can't do the walking and do the room or whatever. But the point is, is just like be consistent in the number one rule. The rule is that it's not more fun to be outside of there versus being right here. So I hope that those tips help you. You guys, if they do, if you think that, that it's gonna like, whatever, save your day, if it turned on some light bulbs for you at all, um, give me a thumbs up so that I know, okay? Down below, give me a thumbs up. And then in the comments below, share with me the things that you do that are tricks for you, that you've learned that help you with your kids and keeping them quiet in meetings that are important. Okay, and subscribe if you guys want to see more videos to help you live happy and be inspired.